Another fundamental ADT, abstract data type, is the stack. Just like a stack of plates, a stack is a data structure that accepts new elements on its logical top and offers them from the same place. A stack doesn't provide an insert operation. Instead, it will allow you to push a new element onto the stack or pop an element off the stack. This makes the stack a last-in, first-out data structure. Whatever you pop off a stack is the element you most recently pushed onto it. The term last-in, first-out, abbreviated LIFO, predates the data structure. It's actually a logistics term that was used to describe the warehousing and accounting of inventory, long before anyone had built an electromechanical computer. It's like a moving truck. Whatever you need to have first access to at your new house had better be loaded last on the truck from your old house. The stack only needs to support the push and pop operations, and an operation to peak at the current top value, plus perhaps a method to get the current depth of the stack. This gives us a lot of freedom in terms of how we implement it internally. One option would be to use the linked list, which can give us constant time pushes and pops, assuming we've made some basic design choices sensibly. However, although a linked list can give us constant time push and pop operations, the constants involved are quite high. We don't actually want to do a dynamic memory allocation from the heap for every element that we push on the stack. Instead, it's often better to implement a stack using a vector, an array, or even architecture-specific CPU instructions. What's the cost of pushing to the back of a vector or a manually managed array? Well, I'm glad you asked. The cost of adding to a dynamically growable array, such as a vector, depends on the strategy that we use for allocating memory. Whenever we don't have enough memory to store an element being pushed, we need to allocate a new array, copy the old values over, and then write the new value. One strategy would be to allocate a new array that's one element larger than the old one. This is simple, but it comes at a cost. We will have to do a new allocation and order n value copies or moves on every push. If, on the other hand, we double the array every time we allocate more memory, we can amortize or spread out the cost of the allocations across many push operations. The first push to our empty array will require us to do one allocation and one write of the element being pushed. The next push will require one allocation of size 2, one copy from the old array, and one write of the new element. The next push will cause us to do one allocation, two copies, and one write. That allocation buys us a freebie. The next push will only cost one write. We will perform allocations and copies at push 1, 2, 4, 8, 16, etc., up to n over 2 and then n, but all of the intermediate pushes will be pretty close to free. If we add up the allocations, copies, and writes, we can see that each allocation gets us twice as much memory as the one before it, so the size of the array is 2 to the a. Therefore, a is the base 2 logarithm of n. c, the number of copies, will be something like n plus n over 2 plus n over 4 and all the way down to 2 plus 1. This is a geometric series of n over 2 to the i from 0 to a, which we know is from 0 to the base 2 log of n. This geometric series works out to approximately 2n. It's actually 2n minus 1, but we don't care about lower order terms. Finally, the number of writes required for n pushes is n times 1 write per push, which is just n. So, the cost of performing n pushes on a doubling vector is log n plus 2n plus n, which is simply on the order of n. That means that the amortized cost of each push is constant time. Stacks are useful for tracking all kinds of information, including arithmetic, parts of program parsing and expression evaluation, and calling functions. Remember that local variables in C++ programs are stored in a memory region called the stack. This is a super-optimized version of the generic data structure that we're looking at. Stack operations are so common that CPUs provide dedicated instructions for pushing and popping CPU registers to and from the stack. One thing to be aware of, although stacks logically grow from bottom to top, CPU push and pop instructions typically assume that stacks grow downwards.